talks about a prospective LNG plant that I worked on with these colleagues, uh, Cardin, Burani, his thesis student, uh, Cardin, uh, and his thesis student, Burani, and uh, others um, uh, with the Keppel Offshore and Marine Corporation, which is a big uh, shipbuilding, platform building, metal bending uh, uh, government company in Singapore. And they had this as a prospective case and uh, as a, they had a commission, a design, they were working on it for some oil company. And we took this on as a way of thinking about can one do better as I think indeed we can. And that's what this is about. So it is uh, first of all, a parametric analysis. That is, um, that is, uh, looks at a significant range of factors. That is, instead of saying, this is the condition that says, well, what if the economy of the scale were longer? What if the uncertainty was different? What if learning was a different scale? So that it's designed to illustrate a range of possible conditions of how you might do it, rather than trying to specify a particular one. So it's a design as a learning experience. I hope you will find it so. So, the general idea is sort of to do mid-text, if you want, uh, that homework in a much more uh, detailed and uh, complicated situation. And to what conclusions can we talk about in terms of preferred strategies? Notice again that I've talked about preferred strategies because there's trade-offs about the cost and the, and the risk. There are trade-offs about the political extent. And there's a variety of other factors that are involved in it. But um, here the focus on the economic aspects. So the key conclusion is that flexible can provide clear economic benefits. I don't say it must, uh, but they, uh, it's pretty clear that they can provide it. These are pushed by discount rate effects and learning eff effects. Discount rate, because if you invest later on, it costs less than terms of present value. Learning, in fact, is that if you build several modules, the next time you do it, you'll avoid mistakes or improve design and so forth. And uh, this uh, comes with building often, but not necessarily on some kind of modularity of design. And these factors, discount rate, learning effects, module design, work against the economies of scale, which encourage people to uh, build for all future capacity right up front, which, was part of the task of the Mitex example uh, that you worked through was uh, that many people had the normal reflex was, oh, yeah, that's what we need. We're going to build for it right at the beginning and not mess around with it. But it turns out that that common reaction is often uh, anti-economic. So, and also the actual expected value of the capex of the project under uncertainty is less than the deterministic uh, estimation. So uh, that's where we're going. So uh, I'm now giving you, uh, taking from it, our presentation, their presentation of the analysis as given for a, a, a particular project, uh, a particular conference and so forth. And um, uh, let's go. So um, uh, the motivation, looking through design alternatives, the methodology, the results. So in location, uh, we're talking about the state of Victoria, which is this bit here of, of Australia. This is where Sydney is, New South Wales. This is where Brisbane and the Gold Coast is. This is where the big mineral area is, or some of the big mineral on the Western Australia and Perth. And this is the great nothing, uh, if I can put it that way. Um, uh, and so we're, I don't know, there's Tasmania, Tassie down here. Here is um, a Melbourne, and there are various sites for uh, distribution. So the plan was to be here, and there are sites for distribution of the product, uh, which I'll describe in a moment, uh, at these sites one through five. So the whole idea is that you get uh, 
LNG, liquid natural gas, uh, from the offshore, you used to do a certain amount of processing, uh, se separate out the good stuff, get rid of the bad stuff. Uh, you have somehow get it to land, and then you liquefy it, and it can be uh, used for a variety of purposes, um, but the idea here in Australia was the project was to market it for the transportation sector, that it would be uh, cleaner um, than diesel fuel and so forth, and it'd be an, not only an environmental benefit, but it would be uh, a good business for the oil companies, which unfortunately in the past have often simply burned off the gas, flared it, which is neither profitable nor um, uh, environmentally desirable. So it's viewed as a, in this case, as a transportation issue. Uh, in Europe, they use li liquid natural uh, LNG for home heating a lot and also for power plants, but uh, this is not the, um, you, they don't particularly need heat in Australia and South Australia. Um, so there are three uh, versions of the system I want to sketch out for you. The, des the original design that uh, uh, Keppel Offshore and Marine had developed was to have one big plant with the idea then that um, the liquid product would be distributed to various sites, the five sites I mentioned, and from there they would be used to fuel tanker of uh, uh, trucks uh, to uh, deliver goods and whatever they were doing. So one big plant, economies of scale, very much similar to the big plant um, and for the water, except that it was not modular in any way. It was one big thing. So the first phase that we looked at, Cardan, me, and the other, uh, was to have modular plants. Say, all right, we're instead of having the whole size at once, we're going to say, what happened if we had modules of 25 uh, tons, there's 50 tons, 75, 100 tons, so forth. So we could, what we could do about that was to phase it over time. So we start off small because the demand was small and we'd add them. Very similar to the Mitex Homework 2 example is that, all right, what's the best way to, to do this? And we did this through a simulation analysis as I'll point out. But, so there's, we can play around with flexibility as to size, one, and also as to um, timing, because of the size, what is the right size and when do we time the addition? But the third thing is we can also think about the um, a flexible design so that we can locate the uh, plant elsewhere. That uh, as in many processes, electric power, for example, if you do everything in a one large plant, power, for example, you got to transmit it a long ways to where it's actually being used. Right now in New England, we are getting a fair amount of power from Northern Quebec, which is transmitted through high voltage lines all the way down to Boston or the, the Boston area. And uh, that's uh, maybe economical as, uh, as compared to building a plant, but it costs a lot. So if you can avoid the, the transportation costs and do it locally, it might be better. So uh, having a thought that maybe we'll have a decentralized units of production. A standard issue, whether you're doing warehouses or electric power production or almost anything is not just how much capacity you have, but where do you have it at what time? So it's a, a generalizable uh, example to uh, applicable in thinking to many issues. So, Here's a schema for the design, and it's very similar to the, uh, the analysis. It, this schema is very similar to the garage case. So the first step one was to say, all right, let's build the model of how this thing performs um, uh, as a one single large plant. And uh, then because it's a par parametric uh, one, we say, all right, let's suppose we have a we know the demand is going to be, we assume that, do a deterministic analysis and think about what is the right size for the plant we ought to build. 
That is, that of course depends upon the economy of the scale, so that depending upon the economy of the scale, you build a smaller and then expand it or not. This is the same kind of thing that man did um, in his very simple model that I showed you a couple of weeks ago. So deterministic model first, that's the base case. Secondly, we said, okay, we recognize there's uncertainty, so we're going to think about this and we're going to generate a lot of uh, demand scenarios and see how the standard model performs under uncertainty. Or the deterministic model performs under uncertainty. And what you see is that once you recognize uncertainty, the uh, value of the project changes, decreases because it's capacity limited in this case. And secondly, often the actual design changes. So this is very much like the uh, the garage case, except it's now applied into a much more complicated situation. Thirdly, uh, we said, okay, given that we have the demand scenarios, let's think about having a flexible design that responded to the demand as it happened. So if it was growing well, uh, transportation use uses were ballooning and going way up, then we add more capacity. If uh, people weren't using it, we would not do it. And so we now had a design, two designs. One is thinking that we had flexible module designs, but we all, we're going to do all the plant in one place. And the second one is to say, okay, let's suppose it is possible and could be desirable to actually move some of the capacity to it. So we had a more limited version of only about the timing and a second version of design with timing and locational choices. And then we were thinking about overall calculating the value of flexibility, the economy of scale factor, and the sensitivity analysis.